this mini tutorial, I will be discussing the process from selection to managing access. I will be talking about the terms collection development and collection management. The terms collection development and collection management are often used interchangeably to describe the practice of building and managing collections. There is, however, a difference between the two, at least in terms of what has been encompassed by each term historically. In Australia in particular, the term collection development is often applied to the broad practice of managing collections, while in other places and over time, the term collection development has another narrower meaning. Over time, collections have evolved and so too have the practices of collection management and the terminology that describes those practices. Let's take a look at some of these terms and how they've grown and changed over time. The term collection development came into use in the 1960s to replace the term selection, which had previously been used to describe the process of adding items to a collection. This broader term arose to acknowledge that the practice of collecting is actually very complex and to allow scope to link the practice of collecting to the institutional priorities and user interests and needs. The term encompasses a number of collecting activities that we still undertake today including selection, policy development, needs assessment, collection analysis, outreach and resource sharing. Also in the 1960s, MARC standards came into effect. MARC, or Machine Readable Cataloging Standards, heralded the beginning of library automation. In the 1970s, the first integrated library management systems, or ILMS, allowed the automation of circulation activities and towards the end of the decade for acquisitions and cataloguing too. The term collection management came into use during the 1980s. This broader term encompasses the practices that occur after items make their way into the collection, including storage, preservation, serials management and weeding or deselection which is the process through which material is removed from the collection. At this time, there was a growing appreciation that collecting does not happen in isolation in one area of a library or information centre, but rather that the processes associated with developing and maintaining a collection are intricately linked to all aspects of library operations. Similarly, there was an acknowledgement that the management of collection materials doesn't stop once those materials hit the shelves. In the 1980s, online public access catalogues, or OPACs, slowly began to supplement card catalogues as a means of finding desired information. Often, these were limited to specific terminals in a library branch. OPACs are now one of the fundamental ways that customers can search and access our collections. In the 1990s, there wasn't a great deal of change in the processes relating to collecting, although integrated library management systems grew increasingly more sophisticated and OPACs became more widely used, although, notably, no more sophisticated. Although indexing and abstracting databases were available, access to the full text content that was indexed in those databases was still largely via print materials, so users would search the database and then go to the shelves to retrieve the content. The content was still managed in print format, even though it may have been indexed in an electronic source. In the early 2000s, collection management increasingly involved managing physical collections, as well as managing access to electronic resources, both in hard copy, disc-based and online. The term access management came into use to describe the practices relating to managing electronic materials, including subscriptions to abstracting and indexing databases, and increasingly over time, full text databases. Academic and special libraries invested significant and exponentially increasing proportions of their funding in providing full, access, full text access to academic journal articles. Public libraries increasingly subscribed to databases but the market of available products was, and remains, significantly smaller than the academic market. As subscriptions increased, managing electronic resources became more complex. Managing subscriptions and licenses is complex, 
but one of the greatest challenges around managing electronic resources is managing access. Databases house content in silos, and in the 2000s, these silos were only accessible through native search interfaces, meaning users had to search the same terms multiple times on multiple databases. To assist with exposing full text journal content, companies like Serial Solutions began offering mark records of subscription services that allowed libraries to purchase bundles of records for the contents of an entire, entire database, sometimes thousands of journal articles in a single transaction. These could then be batch uploaded and batch updated and provided access at the individual journal title via the Online Public Access Catalog, or OPAC. In the mid-2000s, we began to see meta search engines, which were implemented to allow users to search across multiple databases simultaneously. These typically performed poorly and were not well received by library staff or users. In the 2000s, new disciplines related to collections management emerged, including records management, content management, and information resources management. In the last few years, we've seen significant developments in the management of access to library collections, both physical and electronic. Discovery layers, like QUT's Quick Find, have become what we had hoped meta search engines would be, a single point of access for a large proportion of the library's owned and subscription content. These layers work so effectively because they re-index the content in subscription databases which means they bring back results at the speed users have come to expect in the age of Google. Unfortunately, discovery layers remain very expensive and federated searching is not as common in school library catalogues, although capacity is growing. The significant concerns in collection management right now relate to digital material. These issues are complex and numerous. Chief among them are concerns around copyright and in particular, the failure of copyright law to keep pace with technological change. User-generated content has also challenged libraries to reconceptualize selection and acquisition processes. An example of this occurred in 2010, when the Library of Congress announced it would archive every public tweet ever made. On the 31st of December, 2017, the library made the decision to stop archiving, citing several reasons for the decision. First, the volume of tweets had grown dramatically since an agreement was first signed with Twitter seven years previously, making management of the collection problematic. The nature of tweets had also changed. The library only receives the, the texts of the tweets and does not receive any images, videos or animated GIFs associated with them. Over time, as these have become a bigger part of Twitter culture, the collection has lost a lot of content and context. This is an example of how digital collections are born and change as technology and the way it is used morphs over time. From the 31st of December 2017 onwards, Library of Congress stated that it would continue to select particular tweets to archive, guided by theme and event, such as elections or themes of ongoing national interest, for example, public policy. This in itself raises questions. Who decides which tweets should be archived? Whose voices will be heard? And will any voices be silenced? Questions such as these, however, are key to all collection development and not limited to social media. Preservation of digital materials is a minefield of issues in itself, with libraries largely, largely maintaining legacy hardware and software to ensure ongoing access to material. Although materials are increasingly born digital and we are digitising more and more print materials, we're still unsure of how these digital objects will stand up through the passage of time. Those of you who have a collection of old three and a half inch floppy disks will understand how difficult it can be to get the information off once the computer will no longer accept that type of material to read. One example of the amazing possibilities in digital collection management is evident in Trove, which started as a project launched by the National Library of Australia in August 2008. Trove's website says that its aim was to build a portal for all of the library's online discovery services, 
including the Register of Australian Archives and Manuscripts, Picture Australia, Libraries Australia, Music Australia, Australia Dancing, Pandora Website, Arrow Discovery Service, and the Australian Newspapers Beta Service. Today, Trove is transformed, growing far beyond its original purpose and becoming many things to many people. It's a community, a set of services, an aggregation of metadata, and a growing repository of full text digital resources. Trove is a platform on which new knowledge is being built. This is an example of how digital collections are allowing their users to contribute their very to their very development. As it says on the site, as you text correct, comment, tag or contribute content, you are helping to build a better service for everyone. In the last few years, we've seen significant developments in the management of access to library collections, both physical and electronic. Libraries with federated searching through discovery layers are now able to expose the majority of their print and online collections through a single search interface. In school libraries, library management systems now have the capacity for interactive search interfaces with the integration of e-resources, predictive text, and drag and drop features that echo the Google experience students are accustomed to. Added to this is the growing availability of 24 seven online collections, which means the library literally never closes. Of course, there are exceptions including libraries that contain significant collections of hard copy materials that are unprocessed, like archival libraries with manuscript collections. But for libraries that circulate material, including public and academic libraries, effectively managing access is increasingly possible through the use of discovery products like discovery layers. But access management isn't a new concept. Libraries have always managed access to resources even if access management has only been explicitly named as a practice in the last decade or two. In the past, managing access might have meant cataloguing a book, making the catalogue record available in the OPAC, and putting the book on the shelf. Recently, discussions about genrefication or reshelving books into genre rather than the Dewey Decimal System have been a focus for access within the school libraries, as teacher librarians try different ways of connecting students with books they will love or need. Regardless of shifting formats, our role is still about providing access, about connecting people with collection materials, other people, and most importantly, with ideas. In the last few years, the term content curation has also come into use to describe practices associated with bringing together resources on particular topics, typically online resources, and very often material that exists in social media spaces. For example, collecting institutions pull together resources related to major events like natural disasters. Librarians also curate content for specific purposes like subject guides. Additionally, the term digital curation is used to describe the practices related to curating data. Curated digital collections often help extend the library collection digitally where hard copy resources may not be available or may not be within the library's budget. Using either freely accessible curation tools such as Scoopit, Digo or Pinterest or paid curation applications like LibGuides helps to connect users with resources, guiding them directly to information which has already been assessed for quality and accuracy. In summary, while the terminology has shifted over the past 50 years, collection development and collection management remain the two terms that are used most often to describe the practice of building and managing collections. It's also important to note that the two terms are sometimes used interchangeably and that in some countries, one is pre preferred over the other. In Australia, we do use the terms interchangeably, but whichever term is used, it's important to note that we describe all of the processes associated with developing and managing collections.